Meta crushed earnings yesterday, and it was up immediately after hours, and suddenly now, boom, down 6% today to 281.31. Guys, it went from 300 yesterday at the close of day to 310, 311. Now it's down to 281, which is surprising because they absolutely demolished. They were up on their profit by over like 165%. That's an incredible beat. But the reason it's fallen is they've started to warn that ad spending is softening. Okay. Now, Meta made 11.5% billion dollars last quarter. So if you're like me, you're probably wondering, is this the right time to buy Meta? Buying and selling stocks is such a hard thing to determine. But before we get into that, Mo, pull up the actual press release from Meta and go over some high level metrics to show people how they crushed on revenue. So just very basic here, the three months ending September 30th, 2023. Look at that. 34.1 billion compared to 27.7 billion. That's just, let's just put it as simple as possible, revenue. And Mo, look at that. Less than a year ago, Meta was at $88 per share. It's now at 281 and people were criticizing the Lizard King, yeah. Mark Zuckerberg, saying this guy is completely an idiot and now revenue is up 23%. Yeah. And now let's get into a little more detail. Fa- family. But before we get into that. Okay. Expenses down 7%. They also decreased their number of people on payroll by 25%. True. That's definitely, yeah, that's definitely helped their operating costs. I forgot about that. Then you look at the usership family daily active people, DAPs, 3.14 billion. 7% 7% increase that year over year. That is How do you insane. increase 7% when you have half the globe? <laughs> like, what's going on here? Facebook daily active users. $2.09 billion, an increase of 5% year over year. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Let's see here. Ad impressions and price per ad. In the third quarter of 2023, ad impressions delivered across our family of apps increased 31% year over year. But the average price... The average price decreased 6% year over year. Okay, so they're seeing an average price decrease, but it's more than made up with that 31% increase. Guys, all these numbers sound incredible. And you're probably itching to go, let me go buy Meta. And I don't blame you. I, I'm in the same boat there. Like, is this the right time to buy Meta? Is it not? Mo, I mean, go ahead. When you see something down 10% in less than two market sessions, yesterday yeah. was 4% and today is 6% right now, you start to wonder and you start to say, hey, should I be buying this? And Mo, a mere two weeks ago exactly, Meta hit a 52-week high of 330 it's still below its all-time high of 384 on September 1st. But remember, guys, these are just numbers that are representative of the number of shares outstanding, et cetera. What these numbers really matter and what you have to do to determine whether you should buy the company or not is to be able to evaluate the value of the company. That's what's most important. If you can determine a value for the company, you can decide when to buy. Look at Zoom video. Just hit it's just a, down to 60 I, bucks a I share. I took a picture of this so I don't forget after we finish recording this. Incredible. Zoom, yeah. Okay. So let's go over some high-level metrics of Meta. Okay. So first off, Mo, a $750 billion market cap. <laughs> yep. Okay. So that means if you bought every share outstanding, that's what you have to pay to get the entire company. But if you include all debt, if you want to buy the company free and clear of all debt, $770 billion. So they basically have $20 billion in debt. Guys, They did 24 billion in the last 12 months, but last quarter they did what? I think it was 13 billion in free cash flow. Yeah, that sounds 13 billion. That is an incredible, incredible number. Now, guys, let's skip right to our eight pillars here because I want to. The eight pillars does a great job of giving you a story to help you determine what you should look at further before you buy. That's the whole point of all this because that's why I created my eight pillars. Before I decided to buy a company, I want to look at this and say, what is this telling about the company? Well, this is one of our favorite things. We have six check marks and the only X's are the valuation metrics, the five-year PE and the five-year price to free cash flow. Now, just because they're an X though, doesn't mean it's expensive. Mm -mm. I always would tell people, and if you're new to our channel, I really want you to hear this. If there's two companies exactly the same, they both make a billion dollars, but one can grow that profit by 20% a year and the other one can grow by 5% a year. Which one will you pay more for? Of course, the one that's going to grow 20% per year. So that's like to factor in. So Mo, is there anything in their earnings release that makes us indicate that maybe there's a lot more potential for growth for, I will say this. Well, Go ahead. We, 
I didn't listen to the earnings call, but I know that they were talking about the monetization of WhatsApp. I haven't even started that yet. Yeah. So, I mean, I look at this saying, okay, those are, maybe that's a high PE relative to historical PE, but having two two billion, two point one billion people using Facebook every day, and you're still increasing five percent. Then you haven't even touched WhatsApp yet. I mean, think of how many people are on WhatsApp. So guys, if you're in the US, you, you don't probably, understand that maybe. You don't understand. Literally every, I deal with a lot of people internationally, a lot of people. And guess what? You never say to them, do you have WhatsApp? All you say is, what's your WhatsApp? Like you go to, when you go to restaurants here, you might text uh, five, uh, five numbers, something. No, you scan a WhatsApp there. Everything is WhatsApp overseas. Outside of the United States, it's all WhatsApp. And I actually think the United States should take over WhatsApp. Like I personally, I, whenever I can, I use WhatsApp here in the States. Mo doesn't so much, but he's been using it more actively lately. Yeah. Cause I turned my notifications on. Oh, you did? Yeah. Good boy. You're welcome. Good boy. Good, good boy. <laughs> Guys, five-year return on invested capital, 15.6%. Guys, this is a great way. And this is a, sounds like a very complicated term. And it was for me the first time I heard it, but it's not. It basically says, this is the return that the company gets on the money that's invested in the business. And there's two ways to invest money in the business, debt and equity. So they get a good return on this. This could indicate some sort of moat, all right? Now, Meta has a very, very big future in our lives. They have Facebook, they have Instagram, they have WhatsApp. It's kind of like to me with Google and search. Mm -hmm. Google has google.com and youtube.com. Yeah, exactly. They dominate the two methods of search. Facebook dominates the world of social media. Facebook dominates the world of interaction with people. It's going to be very hard for somebody to take that over. Impossible? Absolutely not. But it'll be very, very difficult for somebody to take that over. Now, they lost, in that 13 billion in free cash flow, they mm. lost 3.5 billion on their whole meta, the whole meta world. They yeah. lost 3.5 billion. I thought there was something in here that I saw. Ah, finally, for Reality, Reality Labs, we expect operating losses to increase meaningfully year over year due to our ongoing product development efforts in augmented reality. They just came out with their meta face thing three or four. Oculus. Oculus four. Great. Or three, whatever it is. But they're starting to run ads like it, for it like crazy on, um, on the different streaming platforms. So I've seen a lot of them. And look at their uh, look at their capital expenditures. Guys, this is how much this company yeah. is investing back in the business. There you go. On the cash flow statement, you'll see net change in capital expenditures. 10 years ago, 1.6, 2, 3.6, 5, 10, 15, 15, 17, 23, 31. Now they're, they're going to be doing 27 to 29 billion a year. That's amazing reinvestment back into their business. Yeah. They are sacrificing today's profit for tomorrow. This company deserves a premium. They think that the full year of 2024 CapEx is going to be 30 to 35 billion. Good for them. Yeah. Now here's analyst estimates, guys. They're expecting 1370 per share in profit this year, going doubling to 26 bucks in the next four or five years. And revenue, double digit growth on revenue, 135 to 202. Big time money, guys. Big time money. So it goes back to, guys, what's the right price to pay for Facebook, for Meta? That's what we have to figure out here. That's why we have the stock analyzer tool. Now, you guys. We always talk about the community because a lot of members of our community have been talking about Meta in the last few days. Everybody sits there and we're all regretting the fact that some of us sold too early because we saw such a big run-up. It's a really popular stock here and it's a great place to engage to find out what people are thinking about Meta. Now, obviously, with our tools and our community, this is a great place to be. And I'm not asking you to make a yes or no decision on buying today. What I'm asking you to do is make an informed decision. And the only way to do that is to be on the inside. Get into the software, start using it, go to the community, engage with people, come in there and say hi to me because guess what? Just like if you want to buy a car, you need to take it for a 15 minute test drive. We are giving you a seven day free trial test drive, full access to the community, engage with the thousands of people in there, sharing thousands of messages every single month and full access to our tools. All of these tools, full seven day free access, go to everythingmoney.com, sign up for it. You will not regret it. You'll absolutely love it. It's a great place to be. So, Mo, when was the last time you did a meta analysis? Mine was July of this really, year. Really? That long ago? Yeah. Mine was October 2nd. So, guys, in our stock analyzer tool, we have to make assumptions about the future, and it tells us what price to pay for the company based on those assumptions. Mo, what were your revenue assumptions? I did 6, 10, and 14. So did I. Okay. So did I. Now, that's a lot. 
But if they really hit on these things, I'm actually going to go a little bit lower on these. I'm actually going to do five, eight, and eleven. All right, I'll leave it. My I'll leave mine here. Okay. What profit margin did you do? I did 24, 28, and 32%. I did the same thing. And I did the same thing for free, free cash, cash flow margin. Great. Now, PE, what'd you do? I did 16, 19, and 22. So did I, but I'm actually going a little bit higher now. I'm actually going to go 17, I 20, think, and 23. I think that's appropriate. Because they have such a dominant hold. Yeah. Uh, first off, they're an advertising business along with social media. I mean, you have two of the biggest powerhouses in the world in one company. Yeah. <laughs> Two biggest powerhouse sectors, I should say. Now, what was your desired return? Now, guys, remember, desired return is basically your margin of safety. What return do you want to get for each level of assumption? The lower the assumption, the lower margin of safety, the lower desired return. You don't need to make, you don't need to have as big a margin of safety. But as you get higher, you go bigger. I Mo, did, what'd you do? I did 10, 12, and 14%. I'm going to increase my middle one. 12 and a half? No. I'm going to do 10, 12, and 15%. Okay. Now, guys, I'm hit the analyze button. We're going to go through a few numbers here. Just stick with me about one minute longer. 281 is the current price. I have a low price of 200, a high price of 350, a middle price of 277. I have it in my watch list at 250. I'm wondering if I have this attachment bias to the fact that I owned it. I bought it literally. I have one, one, my last purchase of Meta was at $88 on November 4th. I can absolutely prove that. I just got lucky. It was pure luck. If you buy at the low, if you buy and the lowest assumptions occur, you're going to make 5.3%. If you buy at today's price, 11.8, and then 18% of the high assumptions occur. Mo, what are your prices? At 213 on the low, wow. 475 on the high, wow. and 325 in the middle. All right, I guys, know. go to everythingmoney.com, sign up. These, this community and these tools will change the way in which you look at money.